David Cameron's statements on the freedom of movement of people go uh, not as far as his initial uh, ideas, but uh, anyway, uh, one must say that they represent a certain suspicion on the one of the four fundamental freedoms that base the European Union integration project. We cannot have freedom of movement of goods, services and capitals and not having a solid and robust, robust uh, freedom of movement uh, of uh, people. Having said that, I believe that there is always room for improving the rules and to fight against fraud and abuse. Nevertheless, some of the proposals of David Cameron would require treaty change. I don't see in the Dano decision any rupture with the traditional jurisprudential orientation of the European Court of Justice. And it is important to underline that uh, uh, the decision was taken in consideration of the facts that were based the claims for social protection. We should not extrapolate from such a decision uh, a general guideline that does not take into consideration the concrete facts that justified it. Anyway, I believe that the court will go on being faithful to its jurisprudential line in favor of the freedom of movement of people that, by the way, was a major contribution to the consolidation of, the, of freedom of movement. Of course, as far as freedom of movement of people is concerned, member states have a certain margin of maneuver within the limits defined by the European uh, legislation. It is possible for member states to adapt their national welfare systems to fight against abuse and fraud, but nevertheless, they cannot put into question the fundamental value of the flexibility and labor mobility or in the European labor market that is a precondition for the economic development of Europe as a whole. Of course, it is always possible to improve the rules on freedom of movement, but uh, I recall that the existing ones uh, adopted in 2004 were the consequence of a difficult compromise that was achieved at the time when I was precisely a commissioner in charge of this uh, area. So I would uh, be cautious in reopening such uh, a discussion, especially because I think that the first step should be to look at the national welfare systems and identify very clearly what changes have to be done at national level to prevent fraud and abuse. And of course, all other changes will have to be taken into consideration very carefully so that they are fully complying with the treaty obligations especially with the fundamentals of the freedom of movement of people that are a basis of the economic growth in Europe.